John in London, hello. It's March 30th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, for many years. My behaviour, trying to be perfect, far too often. Uh, trying to be something I maybe wasn't, or maybe I was just trying to be. I guess I was trying to be whatever else other people thought I ought to be. And it took me a long time to learn that uh, part of my problem was always fear. Fear sort of sat behind me all the time, pushing me on to be as perfect as possible, because that's what I thought people wanted me to be. And somehow, I don't know how it happened, I fell into addiction. Well, I do know it happened, actually. Fear was ruling my life, and drink took the edge off. Took the edge off me completely, so it made me acquiesce, acquiesce that is, kowtow to other things, people, places and things, and just get on with part of part of everything but not actually knowing who I was and the great gift for me in recovery is I'm just finding out who I am on a daily basis and making some gentle choices in the day to do what is right for me and no longer bother about drinking or addi other addictive behaviours and what makes it possible really is going to fellowship the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous I don't speak for it never will but it saved my life and I can share my experience strength and the hope here on how it does it and uh, yesterday, for the first time in many months, I didn't go to a meeting. I actually went out for lunch, or went to lunch with family members, and had a good time. And uh, I've been recovering from a cold and a chesty cough, so I took the opportunity just to rest. And the trouble is, in, in recovery, we don't like resting too long. We want to get on and see what the day has on offer, and to be a part of life again. So the great benefit to me is always around inclusion, being included in the world, to whatever level or understanding I can make of it. And it's not, it's not conditional on fitting into a pattern or conforming to a pattern which somebody else lays down. It's just being part of family, community, society, civilization, the world as we know it, and seeing the world as it is and in reality with less denials and less filters. So the guess, the, I suppose the gift is for me in recovery, there are less denials in me about my life and my situation and less filters getting in the way, namely alcohol or other behaviours which take the edge off the reality of now. And actually the Fellowship of AA has helped me greatly in so many ways I don't know where to start. So it's a very complicated picture but the, the simple answer is don't drink one day at a time or don't indulge in the addi addictive behaviour one day at a time. So to help me, I go to the fellowship meetings of AA and at the beginning of every AA meeting this preamble is shared and it helps me slow myself down into the moment of now so I can listen to other people and then share as well based on what I hear and what, I, what, what may be done. So the preamble of AA. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that may, they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I guess, you know, that last line, if you like, our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety, is key for me. And uh, whilst I might not have gone to a meeting yesterday, I did do my video and I had, a, I had a, an email from uh, somebody who is part of the orangepapers.org. And from what I can see, I need to actually sit down and read it again. But um, the problem is, it quoted lots of statistics about what sort of people, uh, what, ha what happens to people who have gone to AA and the statistics are slanted to suggest that AA does more harm than good. And I've, I can forget and get embroiled in a circular argument if I'm not careful that uh, AA is doing more harm than good. And I can only speak from my own experience which is it's doing me good and less harm. And uh, I have the opportunity to make choices today in terms of my spiritual beliefs, my emotional stability and my physical well-being. So those three, three things are the ones which I judge my sobriety on and uh, what I suppose judge the efficacy of AA. 
and much of what is said in these orange papers is, is to suggest that uh, the, the vast proportion of people who go to AA uh, are going to find difficulties and more self-harm because of it. Now the problem is, as, as I know, most people who get to AA are already very severely damaged people and that includes me too. So I was severely damaged. I didn't want to live anymore and quite frankly if it hadn't been for AA I would have been dead. So when we take that into account, when we look at these statistics which are at best there is a, there is a definition, there are lies, damn lies and statistics which is often quoted. The statistics can be worked to suit a purpose. But if we actually say what is the baseline of people coming into either a fellowship to do with addiction or behaviour, where are they? They're already suicidal. They're, at their last, they're in, in their last chance saloon, their last resort. So when we take that population of people and then ask ourselves how many people keep on coming back and make it, I don't know, simply because there are no reliable statistics. And that, that's nobody's fault. But if it's to suggest that statistics are the answer to whether something, something is uh, reaching a performance target that is in the mind of another person, I don't know that we'll ever get to the truth of it. So where am I in that balance? Well, the balance for me is I'm sober today. I don't want to change anybody's opinion about anything. And whatever works for another person, I wouldn't want to meddle or undermine it. So if orangepapers.org keeps a person sober and in control, if that's what they want from their lives, that is perfectly fine by me. I shall just keep on going and be a part of a fellowship which saves my life on a daily basis. So I've gone on a bit, actually, and uh, it's all about step three in March. Step three of the 12-step action program, and this little daily reflections book gives us a page a day, and I'd just like to read it just to cheer myself up after that little diatribe. And it says, no one denied me love. On the AA calendar, oh, I'm going too far, it's the next net desk for tomorrow. March 30th, our group conscience. Sometimes the good is the enemy of the best, and comes from AA comes of age, page 101. I think these words apply to every area of, A of AA's three legacies, reco recovery, unity, and service. I want them etched in my mind as, and life as I trudge the road of happy destiny. These words, often spoken by co-founder Bill W, were appropriately said to him as the result of the group's conscience. It brought home to Bill W the essence of our second tradition, our leaders are but trusted servants, they do not govern. Just as Bill w, Bill w was originally urged to remember, I think that in our group discussions we should never settle for the good, but always strive to attain the best. These common strivings are yet another example of a loving God, as we understand him, expressing himself through the group conscience. Experiences such as these help me stay on the proper path of recovery. I learn to combine initiative with, with humility, responsibility with thankfulness, and thus relish the joys of living my 24-hour program. And, you know, the, the most important thing about fellowship and recovery is to be included in a body of people who just want to stay sober. And the reason why it's always talked, it always talks about experience, strength and hope. It's the experience of living sober, the strength of living sober, and the hope to live sober. It's all about action. Action to keep ourselves in the world and included in family, society, community, whatever way you want to look at it. If we try and try and make it ours again, take control of our lives to the detriment of other people, well, we know where we go. We go into isolation, exclusion, and end up not being in control of anything except the desire to drink and drink and drink. So for me these days, I'm, I'm, I've quit the debates in many ways about what is AA statistics. They, they don't help me. What helps me is reality, dealing with the reality of now. And when I say, God, grant me the serenity, it doesn't mean it's all going to be a jolly, jolly j japes and fun. It means that we take life on life's terms, up and down. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, just making choices from day to time.